know, I have this thing where, like, literally, if you want to get on my good side, ask me a question about pets. Because I used to work at the Humane Society, so I think I have. And I know it's all in my head. Like, I know I don't have an unreasonable amount of pet information. But, like, somewhere in my head, I think I do. Like, I think I can <laughs> offer you the, all of this wisdom. And, like, my sister got a cat recently, and she uh -huh. was asking me all these cat questions. And I was just like, oh, my God, and then you do this, and then you do this. I was some sort of cat <laughs> expert. I don't even know. All right. Dude, but you do. Every time I have a question about animals, I'm like, I'm going to just ask Danielle. I'll just ask Danielle. <laughs> you know what it is? When you work at a humane society, I think you learn a lot about um, when a vet is actually necessary. Because mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of times like society makes you feel like you're a bad pet owner if you don't take your animal to vet for like every time every little thing is wrong and when you work at a humane society because there's not they don't have a large budget of money animals don't get the luxury of just going to the vet every time something is wrong so you learn a lot of like kind of like old school home remedies for things like not in a bad way in a good way like you learn that like okay if a dog gets into something that he's not oh grats grats oh, on your tin thank you very much grats on your tin all right what do we need to do oh i need to kill that quill boy get over here um like okay if your dog eats something that it's not supposed to eat like it, if you go to the vet they'll pump it full of charcoal and then like monitor it for 24 hours and make it throw up and it's going to cost you like 500 dollars for them to mm. effectively make your dog throw up. And like you can give your dog like an eighth of a cup of hydrogen peroxide and it'll just throw up at home. I've had to do that before. It's like terrifying. It's, oh, oh, I have a great story about this. So Stanley, when he was, when Stanley was about a year old, Stanley was pretty much the textbook definition of a bad dog, which sounds mean to say, but Stanley was awful. He ate furniture. He did not oh. chew furniture. He consumed furniture. Like, and it was impressive <laughs> and scary all at once. Yeah. And somehow he got inside of the refrigerator. Oh my gosh. And he ate a dozen oranges, the mesh bag they came in, um, a dozen chicken wings that were left over from the night before, and the styrofoam package that they were in. Oh so my I'm, God. In, I'm like freaking out because you always hear that chicken bones are like the worst possible thing that like a dog could eat. So I'm like freaking out. And I actually called my vet and my vet told me that to make him throw up because that's all they were going to do anyways. So he, I give him the hydrogen peroxide. He's like foaming at the mouth. He like doesn't want to throw up. He's like fighting the throw up. You know, he's like, no, I'm not going to throw up. Oh. I'm not going to throw up and he can't make me. Well, he finally throws up. And the smell was so overwhelming because the acid from the oranges had started to, like, break down uh, the, like, chicken bone meat. Oh, yeah. my God. It was horrific. It smelled so bad that the moment he vomited, I vomited on him. Oh. <laughs> and then, like, he vomited again, and then I vomited on him again. <laughs> I ended up paying one of my coworkers at the Humane Society $100 <laughs> to come clean my kitchen because, like, I couldn't do it. Every time I got near it, I just threw up again. So Stanley, oh like, gosh. got, like, literally, he, like, had this epic dog feast of his life. Then, like, his human, his asshole human, like, forced him to puke and then puked on him. Did he ever open the fridge again, though? No, he didn't. Lesson I don't even learned. Know how, I don't even know how he did it. Like, I was, like, he was so creatively a bad dog. Like, he did things that you were, like, okay, so he used to eat furniture, so I was kenneling him, which, like, some people aren't real big into kenneling. I don't know why, but, like, whatever. He... Did you loot this so I can skin it? Oh, I'm sorry. You're swimming all around it. But. <laughs> so I kenneled him when I was at home so that he wouldn't eat, like, furniture. Except that, like, um, Stanley could not be confined to just a mere, like, mortal kennel. Yeah. And somehow, while in his dog kennel, like an ASPCA regulation kennel, not like a cheap, crappy anything okay he somehow while in his kennel ate a hole in the wall the size of a grapefruit oh my god i don't even know how he did it like how did he get his little his muzzle could not fit through him i can't even imagine he had to have had his head like sideways with like two teeth through the holes in the bars like i just wow. i don't even know how he did it he was like so he had to be kenneled in the like middle of the room because if he was up against a wall he would somehow gnaw on the wall through the kennel he was so bad some dogs he's really did. good now though he had separation anxiety as soon yeah. as i got another dog he wasn't like that anymore all right we don't need to do the crocodiles anymore but we have something over here we got to do you're already over yeah, there Yeah, we gotta kill these uh guys that everybody and their mother is shooting oh yeah acid. we should be fine when i was talking about how we were in a really highly populated troll area and it kind of sucked i was reminded that um because they're like a starter race, like 
you know, blood elves are introduced in Burning Crusade and goblins are introduced in Cataclysm and then, like, pandas are introduced in Mist that, like, trolls are, like, a pretty common race for people to choose when they're on their, like, 0 to 20 trial. Yeah. So, like, people are on their trial accounts. That's why we're seeing so many. And then at 15, people start... Like, 10 people start doing BGs, and then at 15, people start doing random dungeons. So we should really see, like, a huge drop-off soon. Oh, thank in goodness. how many people that we're competing against to do things. <clears throat> I've never really understood the kennel thing, though. Like, why people get so upset about it. Because both of my dogs treat their kennel like it's their own personal, like, like den. Yeah. Yeah, so was, I, I've never understood it. My fiancé, when he first met me, he thought it was mean that I kenneled my dogs. Like, he told me. Like, he was like, I don't think that's, like, a nice way to treat your pets. And I was like, I don't... Like, he was looking at it... You know what it is? Some people think it's, like, a cage. And, like, it is, in theory, a cage, but that's not how a dog sees it. Like, I mean, my, my animals had, like, pillows and blankets and mm-hmm. toys. And then I cover it with, like, a blanket so that it's not, like... They're not looking through metal bars. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like... I don't know, like, dogs are den creatures. Like, in the wild, a dog would look for something similar to a kennel to, like, find shelter in. Especially my husky. The only time a kennel is mean is if people are using it improperly. Like, a kennel shouldn't be used for punishment. A kennel should only be used for confinement, for when they're sleeping or when you're not home. It should never be, you're bad, go in your kennel. Yeah, no. I do not agree with punishment with kennels. That's terrible. It's supposed to be their, like, place where they can go to relax. To be safe, too. They should feel like that's a safe place to go. Like, um... I don't know. I think it's really difficult to punish a dog anyways unless you catch them, like, in the act of whatever it is. And generally, at that point, just redirecting their focus is about... Like, dogs are never going to understand, like, this is a consequence for your action. Like, people yeah. rub their dog's nose if they, like, have an accident or, like... That is never going to work. <laughs> like, yeah. ever. Because not- they have no idea. Then they're just like, what? I'm not supposed to poop? I don't understand. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? And then every time they poop, they're just going to be ashamed of their poop. Yeah. Do you want to be that guy no. who makes your dog feel ashamed of pooping? It's terrible. Don't do that, Who people. would do that? Now, though. It's one thing if you, like, catch your dog in the act of pooping, and you're like, hey, and then you bring him outside. Like, that's different. Yeah. But, I don't know. People are... A lot of people are just not very nice to their animals. I'm not one of those people. I spoil my animals rotten. (laughs) My cats especially. (laughs) Like, I I feel like I'm a subpar dog owner. Like, I'm a good dog owner, but there's definitely better dog owners than me because, like, I used to be really active. Like, when when I first got Violet and Stanley, I lived by myself. So, like, pretty much my whole life was, like, walking and training Violet and Stanley. That was, like, Mm -hmm. what I did. What do you do for fun? I train my dogs. <laughs> and I take them for walks and stuff. And now it's not as bad, though, because they're old. Like, Stanley's, like, 8 and Violet's, like, 13. So it's not like I'm – it's not like they're young puppies that are trying yeah. to get out and do things. Like, they're little old guys. But, like, now I don't take them for walks as often as I used to. They go for walks, like, maybe a couple times a month, but not, like – they don't really need it now. They're, like, old. Yeah, old dogs, they just really want to lay around. Violet's got arthritis, too. If you, like, take her for walks, like, if she, when I was, I tried, I thought maybe walking her more would help, but it actually made it worse. Like, it's okay if you walk Aww. her, like, for short distances, but, like, she can't really go for much more than 20 or 30 minutes or else she limps the next day. Oh, poor Well, she's 80 pounds and she's freaking 13, and she's in complete denial about the fact that she's, like, an old lady dog. Yeah. And she's allergic to everything. I think she's allergic to dogs. <laughs> oh. <laughs> she's, like, she's a mess. I love her, but she's a mess. Her I think my dog is swollen. allergic to cats. I think my dog is allergic <laughs> Yeah. He goes around going like this all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Like the reverse sneeze yeah. thing that dogs do. Oh, my poor baby. I got to give him like, um, I do think. Give him Zyrtec. Yeah, just like, I think you Zyrtec suggested is, that yeah, to me. Yeah, that's what we give to Violet. Yeah, When I found out that study, I was so mad. Like Violet's had allergies the whole time I've had her. And the only thing vets ever want to do is give her steroids, which like I don't like doing. Like she, because she's old. Like steroids are not good for anybody. No less like 13 year old yeah. old lady dogs. So, like that's not. And, like, they never want to give her anything to just, like, an antihistamine or something. They always want to go straight for, like, shots of steroids. And, Mm. like, I don't know. I just don't think it's good for her. And it's really unnatural. And I just don't like it. So, like, I read online once that, like, 
Zyrtec was one of the most effective medications you can give a dog to treat um, to treat skin allergies. Like if your dog specifically has like fur loss, itchy red skin, if their paws get itchy, if their ears swell up, not like allergies that make them sneeze, but like like topical like skin allergies. It's supposed to be really good, and so I. I asked, I have like a friend who works at a vet and I asked her like if she had ever heard of that and she said she had. So I was like, all right, I'm going to try this. And it's like a miracle. Like it's literally, I know that sounds like so dramatic, but Violet's allergies flare up so bad like early summer that like I was taking her to the vet two or three times. Aww. Like every time it was like this time of year because she was mm-hmm. so swollen and itchy and uncomfortable and like I just felt so bad for her. Like I don't know how to make her feel better and I read that online, and now she just gets a Zyrtec in the morning and at night when she goes to bed, and, like, she has no problems. Whoa. And she used to, her ears would swell up so bad she would cry. Whoa. Oh, I know, and she was all old and pathetic, and you, and then it's like you bring her to the vet, and she's all panicked in the car, panicked at the vet, and the vet's giving her shots. Like, she doesn't, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And then on top of it, as soon as she was out of steroids, all the problems came right back because they was allergies. Yeah. All right, wait, what do we need down here? <clears throat> I think we got to kill plane striders. No, we oh, no, we got to return them. That's what we got to do. We got to help Zen Tahi. I, oh, I gave you that quest. It's right here. He's right here. Yeah. I, just I took What do we have to do? Oh, he gave us a quest. Yeah. Right, I'm sorry. Don't just literally don't listen to me. <laughs> what do we need to do for him? <laughs> we got to return plane <laughs> striders. How? I don't know. How? I can't, I'm assuming, I think they're over here by these rocks. I, I can't see remember. a plane strider. I just don't know what to do with him. I'm going to follow you. I think they're a special Fine. kind, and if I remember correctly, they're over here, but I don't. So, would you rather be able, would you rather be a dragon that could not breathe fire? Oh, or that's lame. A, or a dragon that couldn't breathe fire... Or a bird that couldn't fly. Ew. I'd rather be a dragon that couldn't breathe fire. Because at least you could still fly. Like, birds. Yeah, but you got to think, like, dragons are kind of enemies of humans. Like, historically speaking. I mean, in a, in a fantasy history setting. Yeah. Like, humans are always out trying to slay dragons. They go right to their caves to slay them. That's true. Yeah. I don't really think I would want to be someone's enemy like that. There's a plane charter that's running away like a psycho. What's he all Cause about? Because that guy is doing the same quest, oh. and he's somehow... I think there's special ones that just pop up, and you have to do your crap. What is the name of that quest? It's uh, Unbidden, Unbidden Visitors. Visitors. You see the big tall birds that stand on the riverbank? They're in flyback, but they're too scared. Maybe you can attack them. Oh, we have to hit them like one oh. time. Oh... Well, hopefully we don't kill them. Now will they chase us? Is that how that works? Where's the guy? Uh, Scream slash. Who's this guy? Is he tagged to us? I don't know, kid. What's going Uh, on? Oh, so they just run back on their own? You just attack them? Damn it. I wonder what he got from Scream Splash. That would have been... Oh, he must be for the next quest that he gives us. That's what it is. Oh, that was my ore, bitch. All right, we got to find a plane shard. So all you have to do is attack them, and then they attack you and then run away. Okay. I'm going to get the plane strider. You got credit for that one, right? Yeah. <clears throat> um, it's funny, because watching back my le- the footage that I got from last time, I did so many derpy things where I was, like, paying so much attention to talking to you and, like, whatever, that I wasn't paying attention to the game at all. And I was like, did you get credit for that? And you were like, yeah. And I'm like, me too. When I clearly did not get credit. <laughs> <laughs> at all uh, I killed mine too fast well knock it off <laughs> don't use abilities on it just auto attack I can't okay. even find one now he little birdie 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 